Hello and welcome again on our Synapse Espresso. Today I'm joined by Philip Popovich and we're going to talk about serverless SQL pools. Is if, if this is the first time that you're visiting our channel, please subscribe. And if you like the video, just like it or give us a thumbs up or comment on some things that you want to see changed or other topics you would like us to see tackled. Now, today we've got a treat for you. We're going to talk about serverless SQL pools and the way it handles partition columns in your data lake. Now, um, partitioning is, is a core thing you can use to optimize your performance and serverless plays into that um, optimization that you can take. And Philip is gonna explain that. So Philip, what is partitioning? How do you use it? And how does it work in, in serverless SQL pools? Partitioning is a database management technique where you split single large table into smaller sets of rows, uh, partitions. And rows are collocated within partitions based on a partitioning column value. Let's say that you have a data set partitioned by a year. It means that the partition year 2016 will contain only rows from the year 2016. And in a that way, database engine can target only a single or a few partitions uh, that you're interested in instead of going over the whole table and scanning all the rows just to filter out those that are belonging to year 2016. So that would basically mean reading less data, meaning optimized queries, meaning less cost, means better performance, right? Absolutely. Oh. Um, we'll come to all of that. Um, and it's important to know that um, serverless SQL poll is used to read the data from the data lake. And um, value-based partitioning is something that is well known in the data lake and the Spark world. So you can use a Spark to generate such tables and then process them with a serverless SQL poll. If you're interested um, to sh to, for us to show you how you can do that in a Spark, please let us know in the comments and we will act upon it. Okay, cool. Now, what specific functions should we use when we want to leverage that partitioning in serverless SQL pools? Yeah, I think it's the best way to move forward with the demo and show how the particular function works and then explain it. So here we have a query that targets non-partitioned taxi New York City data set. So there are multiple files in this table, but this table is not partitioned by any column, which means that the engine needs to read the whole table to filter out uh, all rows belonging to year 2010. So this query took nine seconds, and also this query scanned almost three gigabytes, actually around three gigabytes, which is obviously a lot of data just to filter out everything that is not year 2010. Then I would like to show you a query that targets partition table and how serverless SQL pool utilizes partitions. So here we have partition data set. Uh, since we are in a data lake, uh, partitions are belonging to different folders, meaning that here we have taxi 2010, 2011, 2012, and we are still interested in year 2010. So when I executed this query, actually executed in six seconds, while it can just a fraction of origin of uh, data that original query um, scanned. So we had a three gigabytes in original query. Now we have 300 megabytes. So obviously it's a 10 times faster. So but still the performance. Mean, it's, it's three gigabytes to 300 megabytes, which means you just like save, it's one tenth of the price of the query, right? Yeah, exactly. And still it's only twice as fast as the original one. And now I would like to show you what we can do to improve the performance further. So now I have another query, which is exactly the same as the previous one. It's targeting a partitioned data set. It's targeting year, the same year, but the only difference is that it, that it cast file path function each time. So let's take a step back and speak about the file path function. So in order to target partitions, you use file path function. File path function accepts an argument, which is actually a ordinal position of a wildcard in your path, and then you can filter out it by. It's important to know that file path function is um, its, its return type is, is, is of NVAR char 1024 data type. And that's because the, the maximum path length in a storage is 1024. So we have to have a function that's actually using the same data type to make sure we can accommodate any path. But often your partitioning column values are way, way smaller than that. And you can help a query optimizer and um, resource um, estimator um, by specifying 
particular data types, smaller ones. So in this case, I used small int as your can fit in small int quite well. I used it everywhere. I casted all results of file functions here, and then I got the following result. I'm still scanning the same 300 megabytes, so I'm targeting only one partition, but this time query took one second, meaning it's not just only scanning 10 times less data, meaning costs you 10 times less, but also it works 10 times, 10 times faster. Awesome, Philip. So basically by casting that to the right file type, we're, uh, sorry, not file type, um, data type, we can also optimize, right? Yes, data types matter, and we will have another video about data types. Okay, uh, cool. If you like the content that we share, please subscribe, comment, and share. Perfect. Thank you very much for joining us today. See you next time. Bye. Bye.